One of the biggest assumptions most people make about suicide is that if someone is determined to kill themselves, there is absolutely nothing that we can do, do to stop them. That even with the best will in the world, if their mind is made up, their death is tragic, but somehow inevitable. Yet the truth is that suicide can be prevented. It's six o'clock on Monday, the 19th of January. Good morning. This is Today with Michelle Hussein and Justin Wett. Let's turn to Dr. David Fernley's consultant psychiatrist, medical director of Mersey Care uh, NHS Trust, which is a trust that's going to run the pilot project. Good morning to you. Good morning. What actually are you going to do? Well, we're going to change people's attitudes to suicide and see this as a way of saving lives. In a time of austerity, how do you do it? Well, the attitude change doesn't cost anything. Each suicide costs approximately £1.7 million to the economy. So saving one life would more than pay for all the resources we need. Is there anything more comforting when you're feeling maybe a little bit down than an ice copper? Well, you may need to stick the kettle on because today is Blue Monday, said to be the most depressing day of the year. You know, bills have come in, probably another two weeks before you get paid, etc, etc. But Mersey Care, however, have turned this on its head. It's a good story, this, and renamed it... Brew Monday, instead of Blue Monday, they're at uh, Liverpool One today with their big brew event. The idea is to use the strength of a brew to raise awareness of mental health issues and halt uh, rising suicide rates as well. So that's the key message. Suicide is preventable. But how? Well, there were some amazing results from an experiment in the USA. In the city of Detroit, which you'll know is a very deprived place these days, health workers were able to prevent all suicides among patients suffering from depression, all of them. How do they do it? Can it be done here? But first, let's go to Joe Rafferty of the Mersey Care NHS Trust in Liverpool. And you've publicly committed to aim for zero suicides, Joe. Yes, we have, Jeremy. We've made that uh, commitment. We've got a huge amount of evidence, Jeremy, that, that there are lots of things that we can do uh, in terms of suicide prevention. And actually, I think the answer is get to people earlier, uh, understand their risks, and make sure that all of the clinicians who deal with them uh, have a perspective on that risk. Tell me how do I feel? The song's called Blue Monday. But on Merseyside today, it became Brew Monday as volunteers handed out free cuppers in Liverpool city centre. Well, we're trying to address the stigma of mental illness and bring mental illness out of the shadows. And what better way to do it than offering a cup of tea to people? If you have, for example, a heart attack, we don't say come back in three weeks and maybe look at some literature. We put all of our services around those people instantly to take the risk away. Now, we want to treat suicidal thinking that way. But is it realistic when we keep hearing that services, particularly mental health services, have had their budgets cut. Actually, our view is this is about using the resources we have better. in the year when most of us feel at our, our worst, if you like, with the, the cold weather, financial situation, particularly after Christmas. So it's really, this is about kick-starting an opportunity to talk, to actually reach out to people and get some help if that's what you need. But it starts with a conversation. Men are three times more likely to kill themselves than females, unfortunately. And there's roughly about 80% of the suicides, completed suicides in Liverpool, were by males. I'm actually alive, I'm sitting, I'm functioning. I'm probably functioning better as an individual because of my experiences, better than I have ever functioned. It makes you mentally strong, uh, which is something that I probably wasn't, not that I'm knocking anyone that's vulnerable in any shape or form. I was also very vulnerable. In my experience, it's not just the talking that you do, but the listening. 
by just being there, you may just be the turning point that they need. So together we need to create a culture in our country where everyone can talk about their mental health problems without fear, embarrassment or judgment.